is the real difference between an aero bike and a climbing bike? Today we're going to find out. We have a Scott Addict RC Pro and a Scott Foil RC Pro spec'd out exactly the same so we can test the frame sets. We're going to be taking them outdoors for some real world testing back to back and we're going to be going to Silverstone to test them in a wind tunnel and find out exactly how much faster an aero frame is. We're going to Silverstone? Yeah. As in like the racetrack? Are we going to be driving against the bikes? Because I think the car's going to win. Scott Foil. First up, the specs of the bikes. So they're both built up identically, and I'm not joking when I say identically. The detail we've gone to is bonkers. So they have SRAM Force ETAP, Hutchinson 28mm Fusion 5 Performance tubeless tires, Parkour Alta wheels, Salasan Marco saddles, Fidlock bottle cages with one bottle on each bike, Synchros little Garmin mount thingies and Garmin Rally power pedals, oh, and the Garmin 1040 Solar head units. They even have the same gear ratios, which are, in my opinion, a bit beefy for riding up steep hills. The only thing that's different between them is the color scheme. A quick note about that, the Scott fans out there might have noticed that this is painted like an ultimate, the foil, it's not an ultimate, it's a special one that the Ambassadors got given, which is in fact the same carbon layup as the Addict RC we have here. They are both HMX carbon layup. Sounds a bit geeky to me. For some of you, this will be the most important bit of the video. Let's weigh the bikes. So this is set up how we would use it. It's got pedals on it, it's got a head unit on it, and it's got a bottle on it. The bottle is, however, empty. The Scott Foil weighs 8.29 kilos. The Scott Addict up next. The Scott Addict weighs 7.97 kilos. So the actual weight difference between the two bikes is 320 grams, which in the grand scheme of things is insignificant, but I think some people would probably assume that the aero bike would have been a lot heavier than it is. So Scott have done a great job of making their aero bike surprisingly light. Geometry. They're basically the same. They have the same seat angle, the same head angle, the same stack, the same reach. The only difference on the geometry chart is from the BB to the middle of the top tube, but that is aesthetic or more likely to make this more aero. In terms of riding position, they're exactly the same. Your hands are gonna be in the same place and your saddle's gonna be in the same place if the bikes are set up the same, which they are. These are both aggressive racing bikes. One other small difference is that the tops on the foil are a lot flatter. So that is gonna change how the bike feels and we notice it straight away when we ride these outside. Next up, the price. We're looking specifically at the frame set price. The Addict is £2,889 and the foil is £3,499. So the price difference is £610. So not insignificant. Quick maths. Well, I did quick maths. Mm. Yeah, because I read it off of the sheet. Boom. The Scott Foil has a unique feature. It's a more modern bike. It was designed a few years later compared to the Addict, and they've included a light in the seat post. But it's not just a light. It is a removable thing made of like plastic. And the actual seat post is very, very thin in an attempt to make this bike more comfortable. Flex in the seat post of a bike does make a difference. There's third party seat posts like the VCLS and even seat posts with suspension in them because it's a great location for it. So they've done this to try and make the bike a little bit more comfortable despite the big aero tubes which make it harsher. Interestingly enough, the pro teams that I've seen riding this frame use a one piece seat post, just carbon all the way through. Clearly, they don't care about comfort and they just want to shave off a few grams because this is very slightly heavier. Maybe the pros uh, are not allowed to run something that might fall off during a race. I have to ask the UCI. So how do these bikes feel to ride back to back? We've come to possibly the windiest place on earth to test them out, the North Pennines. And we have three tests to do. Test number one, a climbing test. We've come to my favorite hill in the entire world, which I Everested a BMX on. It's an average of 7% and it's about 10 minutes long. We're gonna take each of these bikes each up the climb. We're gonna use our head units to time each run up the hill. We're gonna sit on the same average wattage for each of those climbs and see which is faster versus each bike. Jimmy, the car is shaking. I know. Because that's how windy it is. I was looking, I was looking at the screen. That's the screen there. Yeah. To try and see if you could actually see the car wobbling. I think today might be the day that we die. Rep number one, I'm on the aero bike, the foil. I'm aiming for 150 watt average to the top of this climb. Oh, it's horrible. It's a massive headwind, so I'll probably drop you because I'm on the aero bike, Jimmy. Even climbing. 
standing on the foil, I'm noticing that I'm needing to fight the bike much more than Jimmy is. Like the wind on my right hand side here. I got blown off the road. Did you film it though? Yeah. Good. In our wrap up just then, Jimmy had to unclip twice and now he's he's standing still. It's not going well. The results of the climbing test. So I rode the climb at a consistent average of 155 watts and Francis rode it at 150 watts. The difference between the Addict and the Foil was that the Addict was one second quicker. For Francis, the difference was that the Addict was two seconds quicker. It's gonna be interesting to see what Zab says about the difference between the aero bike and the non-aero bike from the wind tunnel data because that is incredibly marginal. Next up is the descending test, where we go to the top of the climb and we find out how these bikes feel to descend. We're also gonna time it, we're gonna not pedal from the top and see how long it takes us to get down to the bottom of the hill. It's not even raining and yet I'm soaked. Is this like an actual storm? We're in the eye of a storm, Francis. <laughs> the eye of the storm is calm, isn't it? Descending test, go! My hands hurt from that descent. That was hideous. First time in my life I've beaten you on a descent. If I recall rightly, you beat me on this descent on a BMX once upon a time. <laughs> so for me to do you on road bikes suggests that you weren't very comfortable on that. I've ridden this bike a lot. This is my bike and I've had it for a year. But in the crosswinds like that, you had an advantage. This is unusual circumstances. It is. It's extreme, but extreme. that's it's an extreme test. <laughs> so extreme and 10 being extremely extreme, I give this a 9.5! I can't remember what any of the times are. I'm too cold and too scared. So for the descending test, we both started those descents without pedaling, so it's just free rolling down the hill. Obviously, it was very windy, so that will have had an impact on how confident we were descending, but perhaps on one of the other uh, descents, we might have had a bigger tailwind, who knows. My descents, the foil was quicker by two seconds. I personally think part of the reason for that is the foil was my second descent and I was a bit more confident going down that road. For Francis, the Addict was quicker by 14 seconds, so he was much more confident descending on the Addict, which does make sense because I beat him on the descent when he was on the foil, and I don't think I've ever gone down a descent faster than Francis. No one should ride in these conditions on an aero bike, or probably any bike, really. Lastly, we have a sprint test. We're gonna do a 200 meter sprint. We're not gonna time this one because it's just completely based on the wattage, and we're gonna do different wattages. So which bike feels better to sprint on? Let's find out. Oh, the wind stopped. Oh, no, it hasn't. Switch again, I want to feel the difference. You know, I've never ridden the bikes back to back like that. It's weird, isn't it? How different do they feel? It's surprising, I've I always, I've had this theory that all bikes are the same. <laughs> They're not. The foil feels harsh and hard and stiff and fast and it wants to smash stuff up. Addict, it's just kind of got like a buttery smoothness to it. It is my preference because it just feels smooth and lovely, but the foil feels fast. In a sprint, I'm choosing the foil every day. Yeah. That is so much faster feeling like it's better. <laughs> yeah, but. Unless you went up that hill. How often are you in a sprint? Uh, what with you, all the time. <laughs> every time we ride, every time there's a town sign, every time there's a... A camera out. <laughs> Can we go now? Please. <laughs> if you remember, we were planning to do a proper ride off the back of this because we were here, but I'm, I'm not up for that now. That is a sketch fest out there today. And there's the message. When the weather is bad, you don't have to ride. But sometimes you do have to still make a video. This is my wind tunnel pass because we are at Silverstone Sports Engineering Performance Centre. It's probably not called that, but it's pretty close to that. With Aero Coach, who are aerodynamic bike specialist people, and they're going to do some testing on us and the bikes. So we're going to do two tests. The one test is the bikes without riders. The second test is the bikes with me and Francis on 
both of them. So we're gonna find out who's more aero, me or Francis. Granted, he is gonna have a skin suit and an aero helmet, but I think I'm a bit more torpedo shape. So I might win. I shaved my legs for this. I shaved my legs for this. Sounds like a song. <laughs> I shave my, my legs for this. this. On a night. It better be good. I shave my legs for this. It better. Oh my god! <laughs> Why did that come out of your face? Because <laughs> he just wanted us to stop singing. <laughs> so today we're testing at 30 kilometers an hour um, because that's a regular riding speed for most people. So what that means is that the wind is going to be pulled past the rider and pulled past the bike at 30k an hour and we're going to measure the drag and find out what the CDA of the bike and rider is at 30k an hour. So CDA is your aerodynamic drag on a bicycle and it represents how aero you are in a number. The lower the number is, the more aerodynamic you are. Bike, indoor, let's go. How hard it was holding positions like that. <sighs> you definitely have to practice them, don't you? Right, so we have the results. What was interesting was that we found that the bike only data, the Scott Foil, which is the aero bike, was 3.7 watts more aero um, than the Addict at 30 kilometers an hour. However, when we put the riders on the bike, there's more interaction with how the airflow goes over the rider. You're kind of shielding the bike a little bit more. Um, and that reduced to 2.7 watts. And that's comparing all of the positions that Jimmy and Francis both did on both bikes, six setups in total, uh, and all the positions on the, on the Addicts. It was a 2.7 watt difference. If you were to ride a 40 kilometer distance at around 30K an hour, then at around 160 watts or so, so like a recre recreational ride, then the rider on the foil rather than the Addict will complete their ride just over 30 seconds quicker, 33 seconds to be exact. So when you go uphill, it gets a little bit more interesting. So the foil is a heavier bike, but not by a lot. It's only heavier by about 260, 270 grams. So if you're traveling at a lower gradient, so let's say about 4%, and you're traveling at 25 kilometers an hour, and you're doing about 300 watts, just over 300 watts, then the foil is actually faster. So although it's heavier, it's more aero, and at 25 kilometers an hour, aero still matters. So the foil is faster by 0.8 of a watt, which is obviously not very much. When you're climbing at a 9% gradient, you're going 15 kilometers an hour, so that's about 10 miles an hour, then the foil becomes slower by about the same amount, 0.7 watts, 0.8 watts or so. Um, and the midpoint really is when you're at 22 kilometers an hour on a 6% gradient, and you're doing just over 300 watts. That's where the bikes are identical. On average, over 20K an hour, you're probably gonna be better off on the foil when you're climbing. And if you're going at less than 20K an hour, then you'll be better off on the Addict, which is a lighter bike. Which one would you pick? I mean, personally, you know, unless you're racing and unless you're doing something like a, a road bike time trial or you're trying to win your, your state crit championships or something like that, choose the bike that's more comfortable. Because if you're gonna be spending a long time on it and, you know, it can be, you can be spending 100k rides or something like that on one of these things. Um, I would choose the, the bike that was more comfy, and the Addict may well be may well be that bike. More importantly, yeah. who's quicker, me or Francis? Well, I think that we have to caveat this with the uh, the, the lack of leg shaving for Jimmy, uh, which I really think let you down this time. On average, across all the bikes, Francis is 10 watts more aero uh, than Jimmy. Um, which is the equivalent of about two minutes over 40k. So, I, so basically what you're saying is I get to keep my cool sunglasses, not shave my legs and wear tube socks, Yes. and I'm only losing two minutes. Only losing two minutes, exactly. Sick. I'm in. I've had a lot of fun making this video. Me too. I thought I wasn't going to enjoy the wind tunnel, but it was actually really, really fun. I thought it was gonna to be too like techy and sciencey for me, but it's just, it's just a really interesting space to be in. I think it helps that Xavier is very good at breaking down complicated information into... A number. Yes. <laughs> An understandable number. I also had a lot of fun riding both the bikes in, like directly next to each other on the same piece of road. I think it's really interesting because normally when we would compare things, we wouldn't necessarily ride the exact same road up and down, which we literally did with these bikes. We've done a lot of versus videos on bikes 
and typically the difference between the two things we're comparing is significant. An example being 150 pound group set versus three and a half thousand pound group set or an even more extreme one gravel versus road bike. This is a climbing road bike versus a aero road bike from the same manufacturer and the margin between them is absolutely minute. But even with knowing that, I'm surprised how big a difference there is between them. H having them right next to each other, same group set, same wheels, same tires, same saddles, same position, same head, like literally same everything, apart from the frame, you instantly notice a notable difference. I know what my preference is, and I'm pretty sure I know your preference. Testing them back to back was an experience I've never had before, and I'm glad I did. And it's helped me conclude my decision. Hmm which we're not gonna give you. <laughs> if I was racing, I would 100% choose the foil because I know it's faster. And if I knew that it was faster, it would crack me riding the other bike. However, if I was me now, which you are, which I am, I would buy the Addict and have 610 pounds to spend on a winter bike. Very sensible. I think uh, my opinion is that if I was still living in London, which is unbelievably flat in the grand scheme of things, I would pick the foil because it just looks more exciting. It is more exciting. It's got that kind of like, oh, I want to go out and look like a, a, a smashy idiot on a bike. Uh, but the benefit of riding them right next to each other is you realize how much more compliant and comfortable the addict is. It's just smoother. It just you, It's just so much smoother when you're out riding it and that is more of my interest in this older age of mine. We didn't include a section on how the bikes look because I thought it would be silly. But thinking about it, choosing one that you like the look of and that is gonna inspire you when you look at it in your hallway and go, oh, I'll take it for a ride. It's important. It is important. Mm. And I think the foil looks better. Obviously we have used channel sponsors Scott Bikes in this video, however, Lots of other brands have equivalent climbing and aero models. So while the numbers in the wind tunnel test won't be exactly right, you can probably expect similar results from other brands. Let us know in the comment section, which one is your favorite? Which one would you pick? And thank you for watching. I've just realized why the foil is better. He's got a light in the seat post. The other bike can't win. That's it, it's over. End of episode, pointless, pointless. I quit YouTube.